the let function in Microsoft Excel. In this video, we explore the let function, a powerful tool in Excel that allows you to assign names to calculation results. Think of it as giving your formulas a personalized touch. Now, why is let so cool? Well, one, storage superpower. The let function lets you store calculations, values, or even define names right within your formula. These names or variables only apply within the let function, similar to how variables work in programming. Number two, Excel's formula magic. To use let in Excel, you define pairs of names and associated values, plus a calculation that uses them all. You need at least one name value pair, a variable, and let supports up to 126 pairs. It's like creating a mini program inside your formula. Benefits, improved performance, and easy reading and composition. If you use the same expression multiple times in a formula, Excel calculates it each time. Let lets you name the expression. Excel calculates it just once. That's a performance boost. Easy reading and composition. There's no more confusion about what a specific range or cell reference means. With let, you can declare and name variables, giving meaningful context to yourself and others who are reading your formula. It's a lot like adding labels to your calculations. Let's break it down step by step. The syntax looks like this. Equals let, then name one. This is the first variable you want to define. It has to start with a letter and it can't conflict with range syntax. Then name value one. This represents the value assigned to name one, essentially giving your variable a value. Moving forward, we have a calculation remaining. Here it gets interesting. It could either be a calculation involving all defined names or the name of a second variable. If you choose a second variable, this is its assigned value. Taking it even further down, it might be a calculation involving all defined names. A few key notes, the last argument must be a calculation. This is where your main operation takes place. Also, variable names align with valid names in the name manager. Be cautious with your choices. For example, revenue is fine, but C2 won't work. Let's check it out. Consider the simple expression, sum and then parentheses x comma one, where x is a named variable that can be assigned a value. In this case, x is assigned to the value of five. So equals let parentheses x comma five comma sum, and then parentheses x comma one. When this formula is input into a cell, it'll return the value of six. Let's do a cooler example. Suppose you have some raw sales data and you'd like to filter that data to show one person and add a dash to any blank cells. The let function can be used to create named calculations like filter criteria and filtered range to make the formula more readable. Let's take a look at the arguments. Filter criteria is the name of the first value. Its value is set to Trinity, which is the character that we want to filter. The filtered range is the name of the second variable. Then filter and in parentheses, a2 colon d8 comma a2 colon a8 equals filter criteria. This is the value associated with filtered range. It's the result of the data filtered based on Trinity. Then we have the calculation part of the let function. If and then in parentheses is blank filtered range comma and then in quotes we have a dash then comma filtered range. If the filtered range is blank, it returns a dash. Otherwise, it returns a filtered range. So on the let function, we've defined names, filter criteria, filtered range, in this case, and we associated values with them. And then we use those names in the calculation part of the function. In this example, we have a very exciting version, but there's also a tab here if you want to practice on the not as exciting version, but let's take a look. The characters, this is the name of our first variable. It's assigned a value, unique, and then in parentheses, a6 colon a15. And it creates a list of unique values from cells a6 to a15. Then we have total code power. This is the name of the second variable. It's assigned the value of sum if s, and then d6 to d15. 
which calculates the sum of the values in column D based on matching values in column A, and then A6. We have A6 to A15, comma, characters. That's the value associated with total code power. It calculates the sum of the values in column D, where the corresponding values in column A match the unique values and characters. We use the choose function to create a two-column result. The first column contains the unique characters, and the second column contains the total code power. Each name variable is used within the formula to make it more readable, and to break down the complex calculations into manageable steps. Even if they're mentioned more than once, we have each of the characters, and then their total code power. This is dynamic, so anytime any of these change, this will update. You probably also notice there's a spill. That means it can't all fit here, so it expands to other cells around it. Sometimes we may run into errors, so you may need to move things around a little bit. In this example, let's break down the original formula that we may use and compare it to our enhanced version using the let function. This formula equals if and then is blank. The inner part of the formula uses the filter function to extract rows from the original data set which is A2 to D12. That represents where the rep in column A is, hero. Part two, the isBlank function checks if the filtered range is blank, and if there's no data for hero, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Part three, this entire structure is wrapped or nested within an if statement. If the filtered range is blank, true, it returns a hyphen, and that needs to be in quotes. Otherwise, it returns the filtered sales data for hero. Also notice, in this case, we're using the filter function twice. Let's take a look using the let function. Using the let function, the variable filter criteria is introduced and assigned the value of hero, indicating the rep whose data we want to analyze. Next, the variable filtered range, that uses the filter function to extract rows where the rep is hero. Part three, an if statement checks if the filtered range is blank. If there's no data for hero, it returns a hyphen. Otherwise, it returns the filtered sales data. If we compare the two for readability, the let function improves the readability by assigning names to the filter criteria and filtered range. That makes the formula more self-explanatory. And as far as reusability, with let, you can reuse the defined names, like filter criteria and filtered range, in other calculations. And number three, simplified structure. The let function streamlines the formula structure by separating the variable definitions and the calculations. That makes it easier to understand and maintain. In this example, imagine we're managing a virtual marketplace where different reps are responsible for selling futuristic products across various regions. Each product has its own profit margin, and your task is to analyze the sales data efficiently. Let's say we want to focus on the sales data for a specific rep, for example, Trinity. Here is where the let function comes into play. We define a variable named filter criteria and set its value to Trinity, indicating the rep whose sales we want to analyze. The next variable, filtered range, utilizes a filter function to extract rows from the original data set, A2 to D8 where the rep in column A matches the filter criteria, which is Trinity. Then we use an if statement to check if the filter range is blank, and if there's no data for Trinity, it displays the hyphen. Otherwise, it shows the filtered sales data. The let function acts as a virtual guide to help us filter out and display only the information that's relevant. This shows the flexibility and readability that the let function brings to your formulas. It can make your more complex data manipulation tasks more manageable and user-friendly. Well, there you have it, the let function, simplifying formulas by using names, values, and calculations. I'll let you take it from here.